University's interim president, Dr. Rick Muma. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here. I'm really thrilled to be a part of this announcement of our next men's basketball head coach. In past conversations with Coach Brown, we both agreed that the most important thing for the program was to promote a healthy student athletic experience where each student is not only a successful player, but also left Wichita State University with a degree. As Coach Brown said to me, when the ball stops bouncing, they need to have something to fall back on. I couldn't agree more with that statement. It's now time to solidify the future of the program with Coach Brown, who has proven himself to be a great leader, one that inspires confidence in the players, the athletic director, and most importantly, the university. I'm looking forward to the announcement, and I want to just say, Coach Brown, how much I appreciate the work that you've done this past year under very difficult circumstances, and go Shockers. Now I'd like to introduce uh, our athletic director, Dr. Mr. Darren Burbright. Thanks, Dr. Muma. Appreciate everyone making time to be here today and take part of the very special day in the history of our program as we name our 26th head men's basketball coach. When this started back in November or so, uh, it was very broad and I knew we had time to uh, thoroughly examine our position, uh, gauge interest in our position, which I was not surprised to find out. Uh, it's a very intriguing and uh, very popular opportunity that people in the profession are and were interested in. But as the months went on, and I got to watch Coach Brown and his staff uh, work with the young men in our program, um, handle the various things that were thrown at them this year that is unprecedented in college athletics. Uh, not, only, not only COVID, but the number of cancellations and changes uh, that came at us and continue today to come at us. Uh, so many distractions have existed this year. And to be able to manage those distractions, along with coach a team of mostly newcomers, to be in the conversation and leading the conference with less than a week to go is a fabulous accomplishment. I've enjoyed getting to work with Isaac on a daily basis, uh, see how he leads the program, see how he interacts and works with the media, and most importantly, how he interacts and works with the young men in our basketball program. It became increasingly clearer over a period of weeks and months as we begin to really focus in and, and watch Isaac very closely. And he and I have met a few times throughout the year. It just continued to come, become clearer and clearer where, what the direction of leadership in our program needed to be, and that was with Isaac Brown at the helm. So I'm very pleased to be here and take part in this, but I'd be remiss if I didn't thank, uh, thank several people, not individually and not by name. They know who they are. Many people assisted me in this process, from coaches and former coaches, athletic directors, former athletic directors, um, those across the country that represent coaches and try to help them attain employment, uh, media members, and all of them made their time valuable time completely available to me, no matter the hour of the day or night. So I want to thank them uh, for helping, helping us through this process. With that being said, it's time for me to get back in the office and 
uh, do, what, uh, do what we do on a daily basis, let me introduce to you our men's head basketball coach, Isaac Brown. Good afternoon. I want to thank everyone for coming out to support. I'm so excited about this opportunity to not only be your head coach, but to be a head coach at such a great basketball-rich school. A um, couple people I want to thank. First off, I want to start by thanking President Muma. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to come over and visit with you last week about the vision of the basketball program. It made me feel so good just knowing you're only a little way away and I can come step and visit with you at any time. So I appreciate having the opportunity to come visit with you. I want to thank Darren Boatwright for giving me this opportunity. Um, just thank you for trusting me with the basketball program. Thank you for believing in me and just the fact that you gave me so much confidence. After our first loss against Oklahoma State, I'll never forget. I got into the office really early and you came by. And sometimes when your athletic director comes by your office, you tend to get really nervous. But you came in and the first thing you said was, Isaac, we got a really good basketball team where we only had eight guys out there. So I want to thank you for just helping me feel really comfortable and giving me this opportunity. Can't thank you enough. To the current players, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to coach you. I want to thank you guys for trusting the staff. You guys had the opportunity to do a lot of different things when the season first started. You guys came here to play for a Hall of Fame coach, and you guys didn't opt out. You trusted our staff. You believed in us. And I can't thank you enough for trusting us. Your dreams and goals are now our entire coaching staff dreams and goals. Can't thank you enough, all right? To the former players, you guys are welcome back. I want to see all the players coming back on campus, meeting with our young guys, mentoring them, coming back to see the Shocker fans. So all the former players, you are welcome back on campus. We want you guys to come back. My goal is to develop young men to make sure that we recruit student athletes who want to get a college degree, who want to get a college education. We want them to be good basketball players, but we also want those guys to be really good in the community. And you guys that are playing on the basketball team right now, you guys are setting great examples and keep it up. My vision for the basketball program is to compete for conference championships, which you're doing now. We want to compete at a high level. I feel like we have the best facilities in the league, we have the best fans, and we have a rich basketball tradition. I want to get to the NCAA tournament and win basketball games, just like we've done in the past. And I think with this administration, with our facilities, with our fan support, with the city of Wichita, we can do that. My vision is also to make sure that these athletes get their college degree. Like President Muma said, that one day the ball will stop bouncing. So your dreams and goals will become our dreams and goals, and we're gonna make sure that you walk away with a college degree. The style of play is gonna be fun. Offensively, we wanna push the ball hard in transition. We wanna try to get easy baskets. We wanna be the smartest team on the basketball court, and we wanna play together as one for one common goal, and that's to win. And you guys have done a great job of that this year, and we wanna continue to do that. On defense, we want to make teams uncomfortable. We don't want them to go against something they go against every day in practice. We want to make them uncomfortable. We want to defend at a high level. We want to rebound. We want to play with toughness. And teams that do that can win championships. And you guys have done a great job of that, and I want to keep that up. And to all the Shocker fans, we are going to do a great job. We are going to give you guys 100% every day. We're going to put a great brand of basketball and a great style of play that you guys will really enjoy. Just want to thank everybody for coming out today. I'm so excited to be the head coach. Um, I want to thank the staff. 
I want to thank you guys so much. When Darren Boatwright gave me the interim job, you guys backed me 100%. I think we got the best staff in the country. I think we can go out and recruit great players, and I think we need to win now. We have enough with our city, with our facilities, and I'm just ready to get started. Thank you. For this next part, uh, Ryan Myers, Weston Fletcher, stand up. These two gentlemen will be circulating wireless microphones through the stands, so if you have a question, uh, just raise your hand, they'll find you. Uh, and then also give your name and affiliation. I think Isaac's still kind of getting to know some of you, so that would be helpful as well. We'll take questions now for, uh, for both of these gentlemen. Congratulations, Coach. First of all, I'm over here in the corner. Just what does it mean to you to be the first black coach to lead a Division I team in the state of Kansas? You know, I'm excited and honored about that. I've had a lot of influences in my life, starting with John Thompson, John Chaney, and Rob Evans, who is now a mentor of mine. But I'm humbled, I'm excited about that, and I'm just really excited and ready to get started. Hey, Coach Shakira Martin with KSN, piggybacking right here, piggybacking off of that question. Now that you have become the first black coach in the state of Kansas and Wichita State is the one bridging that gap, just how much more does it feel that you have the opportunity to do that a part of Shockers Nation? You know what? I just want to be a good influence for the young people, my basketball players, young kids in the community, just knowing that um, anything can happen in life and you just got to keep doing your best, and I just want to be, you know, a good coach for this university, such a rich basketball tradition. You know, I came here with the opportunity. I came here as an assistant because I wanted to be a head coach one day, and not in my wildest dreams that I would ever think that I would be the head coach at Wichita State. I'm going to give you 110% every day. Like I said, we got a great staff, and we're just ready to get to work. And a follow-up question. The players seem to have a really good chemistry with you. Uh, they speak highly of you when we talk to them after the game. Can you just talk us about how you develop that type of relationship with your players and how that sets you apart? In our first team meeting, the first thing we talk about is those guys taking ownership of the team. I want it to be a player's first program. Those guys are the reason that we win. They are the ones taking the shots, running up and down the court, executing the coaching staff. We're just trying to make sure those guys are organized and helping them get set for every game. But it's a player's first program, and I just want to do a great job with those guys. Hey, Coach, right here, Braxton Jones with Channel 12. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm just curious, you know this answer better than anybody in this room. What have these last few months since November when you kind of took over, what have these months been like for Isaac Brown? I mean, I'm sure it's been kind of a fast-paced situation, but it all leads up to this. I was just enjoying the challenge, you know, first time being a head coach. I just wanted to make sure I was prepared and doing everything possible to have these guys ready to play. And I just give it up to the players because they've been executing. They've been doing everything they needed to do on the court, off the court, taking care of their self in the community. And I'm just so excited about the opportunity. Uh, Coach Chris Lee with Cake TV. Um, was there ever, when Darren came and told you that he was going to remove the interim tag or you had those talks, what was your reaction, especially still being during the season? You know, Darren made me feel comfortable the entire year. And when, going back to the Oklahoma State game, after that conversation, I felt really good. But we visit two, three times a week, and it never was any pressure about wins and losses. He just talked about the overall program, and I'm just so excited that he had the confidence in me to give me the job. And coach, you've, oh, up here again, Braxton Jones. You've been, you know, in and around this game for so long. Um, just what's one thing that, you know, you tell yourself starting out, all the experience that you have, what's one thing that you'd say to your younger self knowing what you know now? You know what, I felt like I had a lot of experience as an assistant coach, but I've worked for three Final Four coaches. 
So those guys gave me a lot of tasks throughout the years that I was able to complete. So I felt like I was ready for it. And these guys have just had my back, the players, the coaching staff. It's like one family, and everybody is giving it everything they can on the court. Coach, again, back here, uh, two questions. Have you moved into the office yet? And what was the reason that you didn't do that earlier on in the year? I just didn't feel comfortable moving to the office as the interim coach, and I probably won't move into the office until the start of next year. I'll probably do that sometime this summer. Uh, what was your last question? Um, yeah, that, you answered it. You're good. And uh, Darren, this is for you. Uh, what was the reason, biggest reason, to remove the interim tag before the end of the season, and what advantages does that give you guys? Well, all along I had planned on uh, making this announcement uh, early next week, probably next Monday, between the conference tournament. Uh, I'm sorry, between the regular season ending and the conference tournament. Uh, but straight up honest with you, I, I sped that up a week because we had lost a week of games last, uh, last week. Of course, we didn't play. And with the conversations that were going on nationally about our chances to get into the NCAA tournament, I didn't want a weekend cycle to go by without our uh, – without our being in a conversation in some form or fashion. So that's why we did this on Friday, uh, so we could uh, get an immediate jolt on Friday and then be a topic of conversation through the weekend, even on a, uh, a time where we hadn't played in uh, about eight or nine days. Hey, Coach Brown. Sully Engel, State TV up here on your right. Hey, you know, you talk a lot so far about this, you wanting it to be a player's program, and, you know, they're the ones that make this go. And a lot of our first memory after you got this job was seeing you on the court of practice, them finding out the news. Can you just talk about that special moment? You know, what was that like between you and the guys? You're talking about after we get the celebration? That yeah, I exactly. The job? It was real exciting just to know that the players had your back like that. It made me feel really good that they were supporting you know, Darren Bowright, the president, and our entire community with me getting the job. And those guys have just backed us up the entire year, and it made it feel really special just knowing that your team supported you like that. Darren, right here in, this, in the minute. Um, I'm curious, you said that it was a process over the last few months that it became clear that Coach Brown was the guy here. Was there an aha moment for you that says, this is what I have to do and, and why you wanted to do it now? Well, I think that uh, when, you, when you have someone, as we did with Isaac, uh, you want to see how the, uh, how the moment affects them. Uh, that's the moment they step into the head coach role, the moment they're the one leading practice, the ones where they're the ones standing up calling the timeouts. Uh, so you want to see how the moment affects them uh, and if they're wired to, uh, to handle it. Uh, where they're not distracted. And Isaac was uh, very calm. He, I think I said in an interview uh, earlier in mid-season or so that his business card may have changed, but he did not. And he was, he was prepared for the moment. And uh, you know, then when you start watching the success that we had as we were preparing uh, for the conference games, uh, it just, you know, it just comes, becomes clear. Uh, I didn't want to, I uh, spoke with Isaac sometime several weeks ago and, and, and told him, look, there's not one game that's going to get you this job and there's not one game that's going to cost you this job. Uh, it's too important to let something that, uh, as vulnerable as that, make a decision. Uh, I know sometimes there's a lot of emotion after a big win or a lot of emotion after a tough loss or in some cases, a big loss, uh, but you have to judge the whole body of work, uh, and that's what I tried to focus on. Uh, you know, and it's just, uh, just a comfort factor of, of, of watching and, and becoming comfortable with the, the manner of which the program is being led in the direction we're headed. Hey, Coach, there seems to be a energy of resilience from this year's team, especially being predicted seventh, and now you guys are atop of the seat. You didn't even know that you were going to land the head 
coaching job. Can you just talk to us a little bit about the culture you guys established in the beginning of the season to be as successful? I think when we found out that we were picked seventh in the league, our returning players had a chip on their shoulder. You know, we felt like we had a good basketball team and those guys just had something to prove. Uh, Wichita State has had a rich basketball tradition and those guys just wanted to continue that success and they've done a great job. They came in from day one and they worked, they worked, they worked, and they wanted to make sure that they were at the top of the league like we have been in years past. Hey, Darren, uh, with everything going on in the world and in this offseason, has Coach Brown's calmness and confidence surprised you or impressed you uh, at all? I'm going to have to ask you to repeat that. Yeah, with, every, with everything going on in the world and, and, and in the offseason, has Coach Brown's calmness and uh, steadfastness impressed you at all? Or, or, or what about his calmness has uh, impressed you? <clears throat> Well, there's a, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on in our world right now. And, uh, a lot of, and some of them are controllable by people and some of them are not controllable by people. But they all affect what goes on on a college campus and uh, particularly in a, for this case, in a men's basketball program. Uh, so again, that was one more thing to evaluate with Isaac to see how he addressed it with his team, uh, to see how his team responded, uh, and it was very positive. And, you know, I, I, think, I think Isaac's maturity and his career experience is a, is, is a differentiation point. Um, you know, I think so oftentimes today, coaches get, get an opportunity to be a head coach too early. And Isaac has been very patient. Uh, I mean, he's, he's a first-time head coach, but he's, he's no spring chicken now. That's, you know, so he's been through some things. And this is the way college basketball was built for decades and decades. You had assistant coaches get into the profession, and their career path guided itself, and they worked their whole career to get one shot. And today, sometimes those guys are getting their shot at 30 years old and they're not ready. Uh, and they get a job and they're fired in three or four years and we still don't know if they can coach or not uh, just because they were thrust into that position too soon. And I think Isaac, uh, his maturity, the people that he has worked under uh, and the programs he has worked for uh, set him apart in my mind. Hey, Coach, uh, Taylor with Wichita Eagle over here. Um, how, how cool has it been to see this situation uh, just bring out the best and you know, everyone in this program uh, just being in the interim, having that interim tag, uh, everyone kind of rose, rose their level, just you know, helped out with the program. How cool has that been to see everyone kind of step up and do their best? It's been so exciting, you know, all the adversity that our players went through just to see those guys come together and play as a team and to have one common goal is really exciting for me. Um, I want to thank the staff again. Those guys gave 110% every day. Um, you, when you have a staff, you got to make sure you have guys you can trust, and those guys are like brothers to me. I'm so excited for the city, the fact that these guys have the opportunity to win a championship. So I'm just excited about all that. part in the contract discussions uh, basically finished up. So now it's in the hands of the attorneys. So uh, the final contract is not signed at this point, uh, which is very common. But uh, the attorneys will make that available to you all uh, when it is. Uh, I know that we'll probably get inundated with requests, but we don't have anything to share with you today. 
but uh, when it's finalized, uh, we'll post that uh, on our uh, on our website. It looks like we've exhausted our questions. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today, and look forward to seeing you down the line. Thanks for coming. <laughs>